Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Could you please explain the word Lord, Rub, a bit more as the Rub name is also not in Ismail Husna. Please forgive me, Ya Sayyidi. Inshallah. <clears throat> Rabb is that which governs us. So it has to do with governing and not an attribute of Allah Asma'ul Husna are the names and attributes of Allah means an attribute like an adjective in which describes the Divine, the Kingdom. Lord is a title, so it's a title of governance. So that which governs us, there are lords and arbab, the multiple of lords. So like house of lords and house of commons, the lords has to do with that which governs the servant. And the Wahhabi sect they came and added these to tawheed and said, oh you have to declare tawheed of Allah and the tawheed of rububiyyah with complete innovation and was, was never a part of the aqeedah. So these are made up understandings from them because they didn't like the understanding of lordship. So Lord is that which governs us and that's why we say, that which governs your home. Who's the governor of this home? Rabb al-Bayt. So this is… this was Islamic vocabulary. Who's the, the Lord of this town, what we call mayor because these are Western words. Islamic words was the Rabb al-Shar, who governs this shar, this, this city? So this was the, the system in which Allah brought the, the clarity of the religion of Islam through Arabic and it has its realities and immense realities. So it's that which governs us, it's not an attribute of Allah it's not a name of Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. It's that which governs us because when you study the Rabb and the articles we have on Rabb, before you know the higher Rabb you have to know the lower Rabb. Those who smoke and drink and have vices those are their lords. So anything that governs governs a servant is a rub over him. When they drink and they can't stop, that's your rub because the drinking is controlling you. When you smoke and you can't stop, that's your rub. Anything you do that you can't stop is a rub and a lord over you and many of them are vices, 99% of people are under the lordship of their desires and vices and that's the way shaitan wounds them. They're plugged into a pod and being manipulated. Only when the servant fights the lord of their desires and the lord of bad character, only then they can begin to think that they're on a path towards the Lord Most High. And that becomes the governing of who knows himself will know his Lord. 
So as soon as the first person looks at it, I'm going to stop all these vices first and see how difficult that is. They begin to fight and spiritually do their zikrs, meditate, contemplate, read lots of their du'as, make their meditation. Then they begin to understand when that fight is, is intense and those have been brought down, then they begin to understand the lords that are all around them of angelic realities, of pious souls, of awliya, of uh, our shaykhs, all of these lights that are around us that govern us and inspire us to rise towards the heavenly kingdom. That there's so much more all around us that we can't even understand. And this is Allah's rahmah and mercy, if people think they're doing it on their own then it's a complete egoism. When they're sincere and true that no they, they don't have the ability to do it on their own and Allah has sent immense amounts of support from the Buddha, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Akhyar, Ghawthun and Malaika wa Jinn and all these categories of pious souls and, and the hierarchies of the spiritual kingdom how much of them are sending support and, and by command of Allah bi izzatullah by the command and the permission of Allah everything takes place and it comes to Prophet and then by the command of Sayyidina Muhammad it moves through the Muhammadan government. And that's separate from tariqah that, that those are completely separate understandings. Tariqah and the Muhammadan government are not related. So you think somebody is in the tariqah and you say oh, they, that you give them titles from the Muhammadan government is not correct. There are many Muhammadan government servants that are sitting in a zikr because the tariqahs are schools and finishing schools but they're not the government. You go to West Point in America and they recruit you to be a general but doesn't mean you're in the army. You go to Stanford, you go to UCLA, you go to MIT and they come and ask you to join the CIA because you're good at MIT and, and mechanics and, and quantum theory and IT. Doesn't mean you're in the government. There's a schools that train students to become rijal and the Muhammadan government and kingdom is completely separate. And that's not something inheritable that has its own structure and when one dies the next one is moved up. And they have to be trained from the bottom level all the way up to the Ghawth. It's not an inheritable station, your, your relative doesn't die and then you take the seat. It doesn't at all work like that, that's the tariqah. The tariqah can be given to anyone, the Muhammadan government has nothing to do with that at all. That's based on a pyramid structure that one dies, next one up, one dies, next one up, one dies, next one up because at all levels they have to have been trained under that government. So then those are a much deeper and immense reality. So many of these kutubs and the Ghawth and all of these spiritual people they're hidden and they're hidden in zikrs because they're ahl dhikr but they're not the head of the zikrs, they're not head of the tariqahs, that has nothing, they're not related at all. It just so happened that Sultan and awliya Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani was the Ghawth but that's not a, a given in all times so that, that's something completely separate inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah As I learn more from work about electronics and how the flow of electrons, it's incredibly better hearing it from you. You're making my job much easier and making life easier to bear. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Salaam. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi what would be your advice to a new convert who has just found Allah and wants to come closer to Him? Get the meditation. Start reading the articles on, on meditation and contemplation and 
how to make your connection because this is a, a path filled with traps. And the reality that Allah gives to guidance is an is a immense blessing because the ones whom distance themselves from guides, they distance themselves from God's mercy because traversing these realities are not something easy. So anyone who's entered into a masjid can understand that. You sit in the mosque, it's a, it's a carnival from every direction. You take out tasbih, somebody m moves up close to you, akhi, this is innovation. So what are you talking about innovation? Masba is a, this is an innovation and you, you, you're going to get bombarded left and right because there are hundred mufti, if the mosque has hundred people praying Jummah, hundred of them are muftis. Means everyone's going to give you a fatwa and that, that is the time of jahaliyyah, we are not in the time of great knowledge. We're in the time where children are making fatwas against the imams of the great madhabs. Isn't that how crazy people are now? That the scholars whom their purity were the purest of the nation, the young children are now making fatwas against their teachings and their rulings. So the time of ignorance is now before the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi in which everyone has an opinion and that's like giving a fatwa, they're going to give you all of the Islamic jurisprudence in the middle of your salah and they touch their toes to your toes and bump their shoulder to your shoulder, every sort of ridiculous and silliness. So those whom Allah guides is a true blessing to be guided so that they can understand from the shaykh and the shaykh's teaching, do this, do this, do this and keep yourself safe. Don't go out telling everybody, oh I found the tariqah, well that's like saying I have gold in my pocket and go down the street and you're going to be surprised somebody robbed you. So if you think you have something shaitan will send his agents, go and confuse that person, don't let them say these truths to people. And immediately somebody come, confuse you, before you know it you think, okay I'm going to leave everything. And that was an agent of shaitan to steal your gold. So means if you're guided you stay quiet, if you're guided build yourself. If you're guided then follow the guidance of the shaykh and that's all you need. You don't have to go here, you don't have to go there, you just sit and follow your guidance, watch the videos, learn your deen because now shaitan is going to come at you in six directions. Before you were with shaitan, so he loved you, he loved everyone. As soon as we become against shaitan, his vow in Qur'an is, I'm coming after them in six directions and I'm going to hit them first in the mosque because I have the most amount of agents there, right? Because the person who comes to deen he's not being attacked at a bar, he gave that up. But shaitan is going to put his people everywhere as he was an agent who went into paradise to bring Adam down. So don't underestimate your enemy and that he attacks from every direction. So it means that the tariqahs are a gift from Allah Hold tight to the shaykh's hand and don't look anywhere else. Even other shaykhs come to steal your hand, close your eyes and hold firm, don't pay attention to anything. There's caravans that come all the time passing in and out of town trying to steal people. But in the end they just leave these people to be abandoned on the side of the road. And what you know is that you broke your hand from the hand of the shaykh. So we see many caravans they come and try to steal some people and they drop them somewhere else and they never come back again. But then those people damage themselves from the connection with the shaykh because they broke their vow, they broke their handhold. So these are the testings that Allah sent to servants, hold firm to what you believe close your eyes and do your practices. You don't have to tell anyone, you don't have to broadcast it to everyone. So it's a very private path until the servant built themselves and prepared to fight shaitans. At that time then they built themselves, they start to propagate and push out articles and push out all of the teachings and alhamdulillah 
InshaAllah give everybody strength and, and conviction and istiqam to be firm on their tariqah and firm on what they believe and who they are accompanying inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi on the app at the end of the salawat list it says as Mulana made intention we do the same intention what is the reality behind this forgive me Sayyidi as Mulana made intention we make intention I know ask Shahid he wrote that <laughs> means that we're intending every amal not from what I understand. Every action, every action is, Ya Rabbi I'm, I'm asking you not from what I'm asking and my desires but I'm making intention on what the shaykhs made intention because they know true intention. So that's the, the, the given for all our du'as is that, Ya Rabbi I know not what I ask and what I do. I'm asking from the intention of Prophet from the intention of your awliyaullah and from the intention of my guides. They know what I should be asking for so I'm turning my intention over to them. Because many people make it, oh you know, give me gas in my, my gas station, I want lots of cash, yeah, but can, you, can you even give me like lottery numbers, oh, they ask for everything. So we can be very harmful in the intentions that we make. So better to turn the intention over that, I know not what I'm asking, what's good for me. If I knew what was good for me I wouldn't be in this position right now. I'm asking for the intention of these awliya that what is good for me Ya Rabbi grant from their intention when they make these du'as I, I say, Ameen and they make the du'as and I'm, I'm with them. So alhamdulillah it's a way of conveying myself to be nothing again, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How did pious people become part of the Muhammadan government? Forgive me for my bad adab. They're inspired by Allah to become Rijal. So before anyone can become Abdullah, and we have a talk on that on the website that's much more complicated for people if I talk then they get confused. But the station before Abdullah is Rijalullah. They have to be enrolled in schools of chivalry so that the Muhammadan government is based on good character. Remember the highest servants of this kingdom they are the immense nukht. So the imam of the budala, what was the shaykh, his the dunya name, Tufayq? Shaykh Luhafi. Luhaifi. Yeah, Shaykh Luhaifi was the imam of the budala, what they call Imam Shiabuddin from imam of the budala. This for people to understand what awliya are, not the people whom broadcasting now who they are. But these awliya they're characteristic because they are the highest nuqs. If you watch the videos and the teachings of him they would come into his masjid and thought he was the caretaker with not a, 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 a something God forbid is a high station but they gave it no credibility. They thought, is which this person maybe cleaning the masjid, what's the big deal here giving everybody water? Then they would sit down for hadith classes, he was the, the scholar of the hadith and would begin to teach them. Immensely humble, crying all the time, very, very soft, never hard spoken, filled with Divinely love that people emanate and radiate towards their heart. So these are… and. All of them were like that Ahl al-Sham that they have this immense character of softness and love and compassion because they know what gift Allah gave them. They know how they can change the hearts of people with their du'a. They don't need to be hard with people, that's shaitan's job. 
Shaitan already trying to take everybody to Jahannam. The role of the shaykh is to take them to paradise. Even the one whom is convinced to go to Jahannam, his role is to convert him back to paradise. When they don't know their role, it seems like they're busy, busier trying to condemn people to Jahannam, making comments and, and ridicules and say, well you forgot your shaykh role. Because these big ones, their du'a is enough, they, they can carry all of mankind. Mawlana Shah Naqshaban with his right eye will dress five levels of paradise under his intercession with the light from Nur al hai that his right eye has the Sifat al-Nur from Sifat al-Rahman, right because he's a sayyid from both sides that a light will come from his right eye on the day of judgment in which that light of nur means the light of pure belief will begin to enter into the souls of people and that light will be an intercession for who they are and that to save them from difficulty. This one great sultan and awliya filling five paradises filled with souls. So it's un unimaginable. Then a nukht on this earth, their role is to be loving and take people out of Jahannam because they're all Nur Muhammad Nothing hurt them more to see the light of Prophet running towards Jahannam. So they're not in the business of taking people in paradise and throwing them out into Jahannam. Because shaitan already doing that job, so why would you want to do the job of shaitan? So your job is then to bring people towards Rahman, be kind, be loving, encouraging, building people. But become more and more rare in the last days. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can you please advise on how to be off if your whole family is on for dunya and tell you that you are mentally disturbed when you are always off? Well I think just by virtue of your family you're learning how to be off. So that's the hikmah of Allah's putting you where you are because nothing like an on person to smash you into being off. So everything has its law of opposites, you know. When somebody is too humble, the shaykh will tell them to start talking and speak up. When somebody is too big mouth, the shaykh says, stop talking. And so everyone has their own medicine. If Allah put us in an environment of people whom are very on, and we feel ourselves inspired in the way, that by itself will turn the person to be a nuqt because they can't talk and they will be humiliated and they will be humbled and they will feel like they're grinding and smashing and, and you know being turned from a steak into ground beef. Anytime you feel like you're being turned into ground beef then yes it's correct, alhamdulillah. Not physical, if somebody hurts you then this has nothing to do with any physical abuse, that call 911. It's like when you call like a clinic on the phone and say, if this is an emergency hang up the phone and call 911 immediately. Same thing, the tariqah teaching we're not talking about abuse. If you're being abused immediately turn off YouTube and call 911. But this is for just pain on the nafs, when your nafs is in pain and sad then that's, that's its medicine inshaAllah. And how to make it more peaceful and loving? Well you should be doing muraqabah because when the nafs is burning the muraqabah is very powerful because the soul is enjoying it, the soul loves the fire on the nafs. So if you don't do the meditation muraqabah and the connection all you feel is just fire, that's pretty bad. 
So it gives us an opportunity to meditate, the meditation should be very strong because you draw close to the presence of Prophet and the presence of Allah the presence of the shaykhs inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Thank you so much. Uh, how does temporary sadness, not hopelessness, relate to being a nuqt when waiting for relief and opening? Does sadness for a while affect our tawakkul? Sadness? No, it's a natural reaction from the body. So this is, you know, the body has its natural elements and the soul has its own understanding. So these two elements have their own way of reacting. So grief comes, the body is going to cry, the, the, everything is going to react with grief and sickness through the body because that's the body function. So Allah created the body with its own governing rules. But the soul then has to have a control. When grief comes and meditate and contemplate like what we're saying when you connect with the shaykh, you connect all of a sudden through this physical grief. If you feel an immense connection and drawing to Prophet well that's the relief. That, that is what gives the servant hope, they feel this nearness and closeness and they feel a relief. This is the secret of zilzila which Allah describes when we begin to shake the earth and what she has hidden comes out. Means the reality of the, the lights and things come out when things are shaken. So anytime there's a quaking and an earthquake, something comes out. So the womb is the same, how much, con how many contractions it has to have to bring out a, a form of life. So the earth is in a continuous contraction, contraction, there are thousands of earthquakes at every moment throughout this earth. And so with every tajalli of jalali means Allah's might when it hits it, it contracts. And Allah relieves it, it becomes jamali and beautific and that becomes the secret of our existence is that there's a continuous state of on and off. That uh, Allah's nazar and contraction and jamal is that Allah lifts with a beautific light and that's how everything is growing by these sort of crushings and relief, crushing and relief. And Allah granted through Surat al Shara. That through every difficulty comes relief, through every difficulty comes relief. The Surah al Inshira is a description of these realities. And I think we gave the tafsir of Surah al Inshira based on that. That with every difficulty comes relief, and that Allah just started it by saying, with every difficulty, not with every goodness then will come difficulty, but with every difficulty comes a relief. Because the difficulty is the crushing, then comes the blessing, crushing, blessing, crushing, blessing. Because how could you get a blessing unless you've been crushed? How could I give you a reward? How could I give you pay if you didn't work that day? Say, so, no, pay me ahead of time, I'm going to work next week. Say, so, no, you won't show up. So, you got to put your time in to get your reward. So, means Allah going to crush, see how your character, and then they're going to give you a reward, inshaAllah. So it all makes logical sense, right? So you don't pay anyone until they do the job. So spiritual job is same, do your spiritual job you get your reward. And only through that Allah will bring out what's hidden because that's the Surat al Inshar is about the heart and that the opening of the heart towards the Divinely Presence when Prophet his chest was expanded as a result of that reality. So anyone who wants their heart to be, con to be expanded and to be washed and to be exchanged, that the dunya heart they have to be given the Muhammadan heart in which their heart has Rasulullah stamped upon it inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa is it possible for a jinn to prevent a person from getting married? 
it's, it's, it's possible for jinn to kill somebody, why would be getting married a difficult thing? So they're, they're capable of extreme grief, sickness, difficulties, everything because just like a human, can a human do it? Yes. So whatever a human can do, they can do thousand times worse because you can't see them and they have different spiritual abilities that Allah has given to them. So that's why Allah gave us, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَا قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ Because of this creation in which Allah created of what initially is perceived to be stronger than our creation until they reach their reality. So remember we said that we came as a very powerful creation from heavens with 90 trillion volts. Imagine then the power of this creation and was taught all the names. And then Allah ordered everything make sujood because of the power of this creation and the, the honour of the knowledge it received from the Muhammadan lights. So then it step onto this earth very powerful and Allah understood that if this power they're going to be like those hero movies, they're going to flip the earth back and forth at each other. So I attach to every human a shaitan. So shaitan is attached to every human being and as a result that shaitan becomes their regulator. So that you can't go over a speed limit, you, you don't have abilities and that shaitan continuously tricking and fooling the servant so even their energy goes lower, lower, lower until they can fall. So the system then is, is designed with that understanding so that insan will begin to struggle, find guidance, keep the company of righteous people and as a result yearn and move towards goodness. If they move towards goodness and good practices then they can become very powerful and as a result then they can enter into the realms of realities and authorities in which those realms are surrounded by believing servants that guard and protect them inshaAllah. So that's the game, it's like uh, moving into a bad neighbourhood. The hikmah of that is to learn how to fight and protect yourself, to keep yourself sort of guarded at all times. So this is the game in which Allah has enrolled us, that's why we say, get your taweez, get your muraqabah, get all of these things so you understand what you're doing. It's about to get a thousand times worse because we're in the dajjalic time. And that's not something bad but that should be glad tidings because the last nation on this earth is the nation in which Prophet granted that, these are my habayb, these are my lovers, they love me and I love them. So every nation prayed that, Ya Rabbi let us to be the last nation so that we can inherit that title in which Allah or Prophet said that, that we are His lovers. And that we love Prophet and Prophet told the Holy Companions, and I love them, these are Ahbab and Nabi So this is an immense title and a gift from Allah So we pray that these are those days and that we can gain those titles and nazar of Prophet So alhamdulillah when you see the fire run to the presence of Prophet As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, we have been following you for over a year now but feel too shy to email. We don't want to bother you. Is this bad? Yes. Well, we talked last night the, the same thing. When somebody says, Oh, I don't feel, feel dirty, I don't want to make salawats. No, that's it. No, don't, don't let shaitan play with you. You're not emailing me anyways, it's help me at nurmuhammad.com. So there's a team of people helping to respond to that and that we watch and overlook everything. So alhamdulillah this is why it's designed that way, 
Otherwise you're not making a connection with the shaykh. Then you fool yourself and feel that you're not a part of the community because you distance yourself. So this is all opened as a way for people to say, no I feel very much a part of the shaykh, I'm sort of supporting, I'm going out uh, putting out the links, I can go out and give food. And then it becomes the virtual tariqah that it's supposed to be, that free from borders and, and boundaries and, and limitations from the comfort of your own couch. You turn on, you correspond, you do the websites, you promote the articles, you post and do all these things. Of course then you recognize and under the nazar. We said before the talk is cheap, anyone emailing and say, keep your nazar for me then forget about it, that's not going to be of any value, don't do that. That's something cheap, but gain their nazar by good actions and it only is a finger away. Just take a link, take a link, take a link and all our guys are watching. We're all on all the same media, they say, oh who's this person who's like this sharing every article now? Say, yeah well, this is what the concept of nazar is. If, if the guys are recognizing the S SMC staff, Imagine the heavens are recognizing. So it's not something complicated that why she was asking us th these things. He said, don't resort to the easy way and just say, please keep your nazar upon me. That's no problem but that's not how it's going to work. The nazar comes when, when we actually want to take an effort. I want to actually give food, I want to take these articles, I want to share them to different chat groups. Apparently there's groups with 10, 20, 30,000 people in them, take a video and put it in there. Uh, take from the charity items, put it on to Facebook. I still don't see many of those where you take the water well and share it. And as a result it becomes a, a product on the page and people can click on that water well and they dedicate. Imagine if they dedicate three wells because of a post you made. So alhamdulillah this is the way in which the tariqah becomes strong. Now iOS app users share all the time, share two, three, four sections of the app. Go to Dalal Khirat, share a section. Go to this, share a section. Do from your Fajr Awrad when you're reciting it at Fajr time, share part of the du'a that you like especially. That way those people whom are sharing they say, oh I like this too, I'll click the link and, and get the app, inshaAllah. So it, it, it's, our, it's a way where faith is in action, when we're actually doing things. Then of course we feel like a community because everyone begins to, to recognize the who's doing what and how often they're doing it and that's exactly what tariqah would be. You know if, if in the tariqah just imagine if it was not a virtual but it was just one room. Everyone in the room knows who's doing what and when somebody's not doing anything at all. So the virtual is the same, is that the, the one whom silently hide themselves and just listen to the knowledge is this okay. But that's not the way, the way is to actually to get active and be active. So this broadcast goes out 300 people, within a day it'll be 3,800 people. Imagine 3,800 people took the time to watch the zikr, watch the sobat. Imagine if they all posted, you know there'd be like 10,000 posts going out. You'd see all social media is being blanketed. Well, alhamdulillah three, four hundred have the firmness in which to do these actions and the 90% are, are, are sort of sleeping somewhere. So but you'll see the heat start to motivate people. When they start to see the difficulty on earth for some reason that will be the sort of reactive nature of people instead of proactive. Proactive people they say, I got it, I understand it's coming, I want to make sure I'm really good with everybody in the heavens. Reactive see the imminent danger and threat that is coming and then they begin to become active. But inshaAllah Allah inspire us to be proactive, that just do it so that you can feel the goodness, you feel good at night, you feel that your connection is strong, you feel that your meditations are strong because you're trying your best to be noticed by the heavens inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon. Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. In the sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa alihi wa sahbihi kiram wa nama shaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyya tarariyya wa sahira wa sadatina wa sadaqeen al fatiha. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, 
Please support the button below, the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.